What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and once in a while I'll throw in a list as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below and with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our list. Today we're going to be ranking the Isla distilleries and we're going to be pissing some people off in the process. Stick around. So we're doing a list today. We're going to be ranking the Isla distilleries. This is one that's definitely going to ruffle a few feathers. I would say Isla and probably Campbelltown as well are the two regions with the most vocal and passionate fan bases. So much so that some people kind of define themselves by their Isla preferences. You know, you have Laphroaig people, Ardbeg people, Lagavulin people, and so on. And I promise you, some of you are not going to like where I put your distillery on this list. Um, prior to shooting, I even shared this list with a few friends, and even there was a pretty heavy point of contention. Anyway, I'll be ranking the current active distilleries on Isla, excluding Ardnaho, which isn't putting stuff out yet. And I tacked 2021 onto this title because I'm sure at some point I'm going to have to redo this list. Because obviously tastes change, new releases might alter your perspective, some of them might even win you over. Meaning that absolutely nothing on this list is set in stone, and also absolutely nothing on this list is anything more than an opinion, not a personal attack. I feel the need to include that little point because Isla fans are a passionate bunch. Um, now this list will be in ascending order and for each distillery that I list, I'll also be including my current favorite pick from their lineup. Also be sure to stick around after the list to see what mystery malt is in my glass over here and that's about it. So why don't we hop into our list and in the meantime if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Okay, so even though this is my own list, the fact that this one comes in at number eight kind of breaks my heart. Uh, this used to be one of my favorite distilleries. I'm talking about Kalila. Um, Kalila is kind of like Isla's workhorse distillery. They're a really big producer. So it's not one of these quaint, charming little operations. These guys make a lot of whiskey, not just whiskey that goes into their core range. They contribute a lot to blends, and they also contribute a lot to sort of like mystery malts or undisclosed Isla single malts. Anyway, I used to really love the 12 year old. I still think it's pretty solid stuff. I think the DEs are also really nice too. My top pick from this distillery is probably going to be the 18 year old, uh, but they also have an unpeated line, which is really nice. In fact, they do put out quite a bit of good whiskey, but they haven't really done much to impress me over the last few years. Their core range always has weak specs. It's always 43% colored, chill filtered, standard fare for Diageo, I know, but that doesn't mean we have to love it. They do have some beautiful cast strength unpeated whiskeys out there, but they're harder to find, more expensive. I would love to see like a teenage expression from them, maybe a 14, 15, 16 year old, maybe throw some sherry in there as well, just something to spice up their current lineup. Honestly, despite the weak specs though, everything they have out now is pretty good whiskey. I guess I've just had too much of it over the years and I'm looking for something new, something fresh, something to reignite my interest in the brand. For now, even though I do like it, I'm honestly a little bit bored with it, so number eight, Kalila. Number seven is a whiskey that I haven't touched on too much on this channel, maybe a couple of reviews, but not many. Uh, this is one of the less respected distilleries on Isla. Much like Kalila, they rarely give us craft presentation. Uh, it's a kind of profile that's definitely divisive. It's not going to be for everyone. I'm talking about Bullmore. Bullmore's just one of those brands, got one of those characters that people either like or they don't. For the longest time, I wasn't really a fan of this distillery. I couldn't get behind their flavor profile. I have since come around to it, but it's still not my favorite. Um, unique character for sure. We get big leathers, big tobaccos in here. They have a very particular take on peated whiskeys. No one really tastes quite like Bowmore. Uh, for me, it does work, but they're only number seven on this list for the usual reasons. Weak spec. So we get low ABVs, we get caramel colorant, chill filtration, all of that. Also, there is a certain sameness that runs throughout the entirety of Bowmore's core range. I find the Bowmore base flavor to be very dominant, so much so that it often overshines or overshadows the individual character of each release. So it's not a whiskey that always works for me, but of course, when they're good, they're good. My top pick from Bowmore is going to be an 18 year old, but not the regular 18 year old. This is the deep and complex. This is a travel retail exclusive, genuinely good stuff. Uh, one of my favorite things that Bowmore has ever put out that's on the affordable side of things. Uh, delicious whiskey It's one I'll have to get around to reviewing at some point. Um, so yeah, number seven is going to be Bullmore. So my number six is going to be number one for a lot of you out there. So do get ready to yell at me down in the comments. This is easily one of the biggest Isla brands on the planet with hardcore fans to boot. My number six is Laphroaig. I know you love Laphroaig and they're punchy as hell. I get it. It's just a brand that's never really clicked with me. 
Also, I've never been a big fan of their entry level expressions, namely the 10 year old and the quarter cask. And I also think that a lot of their whiskeys tend to go flat after they've been open for more than a couple months. There just isn't that much from their core range that's ever really grabbed me. Uh, the uber popular lore is a nice one, I'll admit. I would still have to say my top pick from this distillery, my favorite expression from them, is the cast strength 10 year old, although I don't have a lot of experience with it. Where I live, it's overpriced and hard to find. Beyond that, I think their line is good, but not great. It's just never been one of my preferred brands, and I realize a lot of you out there aren't going to agree with me, but keep in mind that's just my opinion, and I want to keep things honest on my channel. So, number six, Lafroy. Our number five is another super popular one, although it doesn't have quite the same cult following as Lafroy. That being said, I think it's got a wider mainstream following. I think a lot of people outside of whiskey circles are aware of this brand. We've got Ron Swanson's whiskey of choice. This is Lagavulin. Lagavulin is beautiful stuff. It's definitely on the gentler side of Isla whiskeys, which I'm fine with. Not everything from Isla needs to be like a peat bomb or a heavy hitter. Uh, I think there's room in there for some more gentler, more sophisticated whiskeys. Uh, Lagavulin definitely fills that niche. It's a wonderful whiskey. My top pick from them is of course gonna be the 16 year old, which is a total classic. I know it's not where it used to be, but it's still pretty good. And they do actually have quite a bit of bigger, bolder stuff out there. You have the 12 year old cast strength, which is really good. That one comes out every year. You have the eight year old, which is gonna be a little bit louder than the 16 year old. That one's another popular one. Overall, a really good brand. I like their house style. But it's no coincidence that the four distilleries at the bottom of this list are also the four distilleries that don't give us craft presentation across their entire line. Meaning from now moving forward, all of the distilleries on this list, every whiskey they put out is going to be at least 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, and natural color. Meantime, our number five is Lagavulin. Our next one is another heavy hitter, huge commercial success, cult following, the whole deal. Uh, this one has been at the top or near the top of the Isla pecking order for a very long time. This is another one that a lot of you out there would place as your number one. I've got it as my number four. This is Ardbeg. Now these guys are only number four because I don't think Ardbeg is quite as good as it used to be. Uh, I find their whiskeys a little bit less interesting than they were even just a few years back. Of course, still delicious stuff, still top tier whiskey, but I have noticed a dip in quality and I find the peat these days to be a little bit less vibrant, less dynamic than it once was. I also think they might have shifted their focus a little bit too far over towards these special releases. Uh, those ones are always huge hits, super popular, they sell out quickly, and they're also quite expensive. Now I'll admit some of them are really delicious, I'm not sure they warrant the price tag, but yeah, admittedly really good. Meanwhile, I feel like the standard core range from Ardbeg has kind of fallen to the wayside a little bit. Uh, my top pick from them is still going to be the Oogadal. The Oogadal is still a beautiful whiskey, but it's nowhere near the quality that it used to be. And honestly, the same can be said for the 10 year old as well, in my opinion. Now I do like the addition of the Wee Beastie to the core range. I do like a lot of these special editions despite the price tag, but it's not what it used to be on the whole. I think a few years back, I probably would have put Ardbeg as number one or maybe number two. Where it's at now, it's number four, just breaking into the top half of this list. Our number three here is another cult following distillery. It's the only island distillery I know of that has two brands under its belt. They're known for their experimental edge, their colorful bottles, and their craft approach. I'm talking about Brooklady. Now I'll admit, I've never been totally head over heels for this distillery. They haven't always impressed me with what they do. I like stuff like the Octomores, but I find them overpriced. And I've never really been taken with the Laddie releases. Some of those special barley vintages are good. Some of them are nothing special. Uh, I can't afford any of the Black Arts releases, although I would love to try them someday. Uh, but yeah, this is a brand that they put out a lot, they do a lot, and they try a lot. And I respect that. But this is a brand that when they get things right, man do they get it right. My top pick for them is going to be the Port Charlotte 10 year old. Uh, I'll admit I gravitate more towards the Port Charlotte line than I do the Brooklady line, but both have some real gems in there. My number three distillery, Brooklady. My number two distillery is what I consider to be one of the most interesting and exciting distilleries on Isla. This is Isla's smallest distillery. It's independent and it's craft through and through. I absolutely love these guys. I'm talking about Kilhoman. These guys put out some truly beautiful whiskeys. They have such a great farmy kind of ashy house style. Some really good single cask releases. I love their core range. I love stuff like the Seneg, the recent PX cask release, really good. But my top pick, my favorite from them is gonna be the Loch Gorm. I reviewed this one a while back. I absolutely loved it. I gave it a great score and I think it kind of exemplifies everything this distillery gets right. You know, they do have some like non-sherried stuff out there like the Mocker Bay. That's solid, but I think this brand does well with sherry. I think that's where they really excel. 
Uh, and this one, chef's kiss. Their peat is alive and vibrant. Their sherry is dark and rich. Their whiskeys are bold and fun. They're always giving us new and interesting expressions. Um, I absolutely love these guys. I think they're overlooked by a lot of people. So number two is Kilholman. So by process of elimination, I'm sure a lot of you out there have figured out what my top choice is. Uh, this whiskey is better known for its sherry expressions, although they do have a peated line. This was one of my first loves when I got into whiskey, and I still love them to this day. Bonnehaven. Now, admittedly, this isn't the most exciting pick for my top choice. I'm sure a lot of you out there were waiting for something peated. Not only that, Bonnehaven did rebrand a few years back, and they sort of changed the formula a little bit on their lineup. A lot of people were upset about that. I wasn't. I loved the lineup before, but I also love it now. But yeah, this one doesn't have the fresh excitement of Kill Holman, it doesn't have the hype of Ardbeg, and it doesn't have the experimental edge of Brook Laddie. But this brand does something better than all of those other ones, and that's consistency. Bunnahabin does consistency. Their whiskeys have always been good, and they still are. I really love the 12 year old. They did tinker with the formula of that one a few years back, but I like the new one they gave us just as much as the old one. Uh, it's also one of the best entry level expressions that money can buy. It's a very affordable whiskey. Uh, but my top pick from this distillery is going to be the 18 year old. Uh, really love this stuff. I think this is one of the best 18 year olds that money can buy. So, spoiler alert there because I'll be reviewing this one quite soon. But yeah, they've just always been good. They still are. They never lost their touch. Their whiskeys are widely available, their craft presented, they have a great peated line as well. Uh, you could make the case that their no age stated stuff isn't quite on the same level, and that's true. So yeah, they're definitely better with an age statement, but I just, I love these flavors, I love the consistency, I love that the prices have been as stable as the quality for at least the last 10 years since I started buying it. So while it's not the most exciting pick, I do want to reward Bonahaben because that level of consistency is basically unmatched in the whiskey world. Now, keep in mind, all of this is just my opinion. I'm sure a lot of you out there have something to say about this, and I look forward to reading your thoughts and your reactions down below in the comments. Number one, Bonahaben. So that's it for our list today, guys. I hope you liked it. As I mentioned earlier, this one's definitely gonna ruffle a few feathers. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you might wanna share your thoughts or your own rankings down below in the comments, and please do. I look forward to reading them. And for those of you who stuck around to see what mystery malt is in my glass, I'm drinking the Port Escague 100 proof. Uh, this is a cast strength, no age stated expression. Port Escague is probably one of the more popular undisclosed single malts from Isla. I say undisclosed because they don't tell us what distillery this comes from, so there's absolutely no way for us to know that this is Kalila. Um, it's an interesting whiskey, it's one I'll be reviewing very soon, so stay tuned for that. And that is it for today guys, so thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.